Happy Tuesday, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. Scott, hope you settled in with everything that's going on in your life. Uh, just an update on anybody who cares about what's going down with my son. He's supposed to have surgery last week. He got out of the hospital on Friday and they did a bunch of other tests, but they never uh, got around to doing the surgery. A lot of it was just actually preparatory for the surgery. So he's actually officially scheduled to go in for surgery on Thursday, and then hopefully we'll only spend one or two extra days in the hospital from there. So he was in the hospital three or four days last week, I think it was four, and then this week he'll be in the hospital two or three days. So that's all just kind of up in the air and everything going on with that. So I'll keep you updated on what's going on there. But now it's time to keep you updated on the tech news, which is number one, Xbox Series S confirmed by Microsoft themselves by not talking about the console but by them releasing the controller to retail people. So the Series S confirmed in leaked controller packaging. You'd see here, it is the robot white version of the Series X controller that has already been announced from Microsoft. And if we just look here on the side, it says that it is compatible with the Xbox Series S, which has not been officially announced by Microsoft as of yet, but now looks to be confirmed number one on the naming and then number two on the fact that it's real. Although those things should be reversed. Number one, that is real. Anyways, it looks like it's still going to have AA batteries, which is totally fine. And it looks like we are getting a more budget-friendly console out of Microsoft. Does this mean that we're going to get them launched at the same time? Possibly not. It could potentially mean that there is going to be a little bit of gap with the Series X taking on the spot this year and then the Series S being launched after the holiday season and Microsoft taking in all of the money that they can to beat Sony initially and the Series S, which is supposed to be rumored in the four to five teraflop region, slightly less than an Xbox One X, would be the follow-up to all of that. And from what we see, the PlayStation 5 is just going to be Sony's console. So the Series S from Microsoft could pitch it in somewhere of a better budget region for anybody who's looking to play next generation games. Because although it's only four teraflops, it will have all of the advanced features likely. Actually, I'm just guessing at this point, it should likely have all the advanced features of the Series X, such as the RDNA 2 GPU, which will have ray tracing baked in, and then hopefully also the super fast SSD. Maybe they'll cut that for budget reasons, but they're definitely coming out with the Series S. And Nvidia definitely counting down to something. So this came out right before we launched our episode of Hot news yesterday them tweeting out hashtag ultimate countdown 21 years and 21 days is essentially what we've got going on right now uh you can see in this banner 21 days in 21 years which would put this at august 31st from the time that it came out which coincides with the first geforce product launching august 31st 1999 that absolutely makes sense that nvidia would do something here however the ultimate countdown might not necessarily be for the ampere launch although that's likely what it is it could potentially just be a celebration of the geforce 256 and everything nvidia has done with a look forward to hey we're gonna launch something new sometime soon but why would they do two events i'm just coming up with alternative scenarios that could potentially mean we don't get it announced on august 31st but it does mean nvidia is planning something we'll have to find out what exactly it is you see they say hashtag ultimate countdown which kind of goes along with their ultimate branding that they did with dx12 so maybe what I've heard alleged out there on the internet is that the next gen GPUs were going to have the RTX 3080 Ultimate instead of the 3080 Ti. That could be something that they do, or they bring back things like the Ultra branding, like they had the 8800 GTX Ultra. It's a possibility. Who knows? Maybe they'll switch it and put the numbers before the words again. It's a possibility. We have to wait. And I have to wait for my 4700G, my Renoir APU that I've been so longing for. But turns out I don't have to wait much longer, although I kind of do. Anyways, there are some retailers selling the chips over on eBay. 4750G getting listed on eBay. Tech Power Up has an editorial on it about how this is a bad practice and that there's obviously uh, no protection against bad chips, no warranty. You could just potentially get a paperweight. And so I heavily advise that people wouldn't purchase it. But if we go over to eBay, you can see that they're selling them for $500 right now. However, that includes DHL or FedEx shipping. It's free shipping with those, which would mean that you get it sooner than the other one that was already sold out, which is the Speed Pack E. 
eBay default shipping, which would mean that you get it in about a month or so, which was retailing around the $350 region, which lines up more with the retail price of the 4750G, which was supposed to be $320. $500, obviously outrageous. You can't confirm that this chip is gonna actually work. And you can see on the page, they say no box, no cooler, not a box processor, not retail version with colored box, but just send it with the plastic transparent case with ordinary carton box. All CPUs are brand new. All sales are final. No return, no refund, which I don't think they're necessarily allowed to do with, with eBay. Like you could still get a refund with PayPal, but oh, what's this? You bought this item. Oh, oh, mine. It should be here at the end of August, the beginning of September. Oh man. I know I shouldn't have, but I really, really freaking want this chip. And hopefully, oh, my price was $388. It's a little bit more pricey, but hopefully I get it soon. That's the general idea. If not, I'm out a little bit of money. That's a lot of bit of money that would suck to lose. But I put my money where my mouth is. I really want this chip. I so desperately want the Renoir APUs in my mini ITX system. It is waiting. It is waiting for the Renoir APU and I need it and hopefully, the thing that I'm kind of banking on is that AMD is not going to officially release these at retail before mine gets delivered. Because if they announce that, oh, we're starting to ship beginning of September and then you can go to freaking Best Buy and pick them up the first week of September and mine still hasn't been delivered because I ordered from freaking Hong Kong. I'll be a little sad, but that's the price I got to pay for being an early adopter. And we can early adopt some benchmarks of the replacement for these chips because Ryzen 5000 Cezanne mobility APUs have been featured in some benchmarks. They look to be about 100 megahertz faster. Cezanne is going to have Zen 3 CPU and it we don't know a whole lot yet. The clock speeds can change. The performance can change. In fact, like this is so far out that I couldn't even necessarily say that anything's going to be relevant here. But I need my 4750G and I... I'm gonna to have to buy a 5750G. It's just, it's gonna keep going. And what's gonna keep going is you at LAN parties with this new Threadripper portable workstation from AXP. You see this thing here? They slammed a 3990X in this boy. Holy crap, as well as a monitor and a laptop keyboard and touchpad. That is crazy. Eight DIMMs of 32 gigabytes for 256 gigs of RAM. Holy heck, this thing is insane. It slightly reminds me of this mod that Tech by Matt did uh, just a couple months ago of the Ryzen Landbox gaming PC, where he built an all AMD PC inside of the reviewer sample of the AMD Ryzen box. It's just kind of similar, similar vibes. And what's not gonna be similar vibes for you any longer is getting a Toshiba laptop because they have officially exited the laptop business. They had 20% of shares in Dynabook, which uh, was the laptop manufacturer that they were working with and they sold that all to Sharp and now they're just done. Toshiba, gone. Toshiba satellites, gone. It's Toshiba sad. I had a Toshiba satellite way back when. Can't remember but I totally did. And I totally should pick up this game, Fall Guys. It's just taking the world by storm. Never heard of this game until it launched over the weekend and it's peaked at the fourth most played game on Steam with 124,000 active players. Actually, currently it is sitting at the third most active game on Steam with 105,000 people with PUBG being the fourth one right now. Had 125,000 today, but PUBG overall had 409,000. Fall Guys seems to be a really really fun like community-based game and Devolver Digital putting out these numbers. Two million copies sold on Steam, 23 million hours watched on Twitch. It seems like a fun little game. Let me know if you've tried Fall Guys. Uh, keen to hear from you down below in the comments. And I wanna try this. E-Ink showed off their foldable e-reader prototype, which they had shown off before, but with now a few enhancements such as a light bar and a better hinge that actually allows it to be a foldable flexible e-paper display, which makes so much more sense to me than something like a Galaxy Fold, where it's just like, I don't really need a giant phone and a tablet all together. This makes more sense of like, hey, I actually want to read a big book. I, I would buy this. That's that's where I'm at, the new foldable e-ink. It's still in R&D, but hopefully soon. I totally pick one of these up. And if you picked up Horizon Zero Dawn over the weekend, you probably experienced some bugs. I know I sure did. I enjoy the crap out of the game. The PC port isn't 
horrible, but it's not great either with Guerrilla Games coming out and actually releasing a statement on Steam saying that they are investigating it, which is about as much as they can say. It's horrendous load times whenever you load up a GPU because it has to optimize all the shaders. There's a lot of stuttering and lagging in key select areas. Some people are having a lot of crashes. Reese actually had a bunch of crashes. I haven't experienced a single crash. Uh, but I have things like time doesn't slow down, which is one of your abilities is when you jump with the bow, it'll slow everything. Mine doesn't do that. I can't have that, which kind of like it, it allows you to play the game a little bit easier. But whatever, I can, I can make do with that. And we'll have to make do not having Cyberpunk just yet. But Cyberpunk 2077 had its City Nightwire event number two. And you can check out all of their YouTube links for the things that they detail in the game, such as Life Pass, as well as how they made Samurai, which is the band in the game that Johnny Silverhand is part of. Johnny Silverhand being Keanu Reeves. So you can check all of that out. It's just some cool little insight into more of what the game is going to be. And hopefully we don't get another delay, but there's more delays coming to the world of TikTok and who's it gonna, who's gonna be its daddy? Who's gonna be TikTok's daddy? Looks like it might be Twitter. Twitter's getting into preliminary discussions with TikTok to try to find out if they're going to pick it up. They are apparently leveraging the fact that they are a much smaller company than Microsoft, so they would have less issues with antitrust scrutiny, which would make it easier for Twitter to acquire TikTok instead of the Microsoft giant, and that could, potentially work, but TikTok's US business is rumored to be worth about as much as Twitter's worth. So we'll see if they actually have an ability to acquire that. And did you acquire some Chipotle yesterday? Okay, I hope so, because Chipotle is my life. Chipotle is my life. Not really, actually, I'm like, Eh, on Chipotle. Anyways, they offered free Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 demo with the purchase of the Tony Hawk burrito that they were selling. The first 2,000 people to pick up the Tony Hawk burrito yesterday were able to get the warehouse demo. You can get the warehouse demo if you pre-order the game or you buy a burrito from Chipotle. A Chipotle is also apparently going to have a two-hour live stream over on its Twitch page. They're going to give away 5,000 burritos to viewers, which hopefully also means warehouse demos. That would make sense to me. I don't know. What doesn't make sense to me is Apple sometimes. Apple a lot of times. And they are now apparently filing a lawsuit against a smaller company called Prepare because of their logo claiming trademark infringement, which, man, I can see like it's a fruit and it has a leaf, but I don't see the resemblance at all. Prepare uses a lot more negative space. Anyways, Prepare is apparently a healthy kids meal planning app, a small company, and they essentially said, why, why, who, who thinks we're taking away Apple's business? Who thinks we're infringing on trademarks? This is gonna cost us tens of thousands of dollars to fight this battle, but we're gonna do it because we think we have a moral obligation to it because it's actually kind of ridiculous that Apple would do something like that. So in case you wanna support their fight, maybe check out Prepare's change.org petition, or I don't know if they might have something more substantive down the line and you can potentially help prevent garbage like this. This this is honestly really bad. The, the, the logos look nothing alike, okay? They're not, they're fruit. They're fruit with a leaf. Fruit has leaves, okay? I don't, man, maybe it's just because I'm not a, a, a lawyer, but I, what infringement's going on here? I don't know. And I'm not gonna infringe on any more of your time because I'm done with this episode of Hot News. Big thanks to y'all for tuning in. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed, stay up to date on the rest of the news. There's more news coming out this week. Hopefully, hopefully the world doesn't end. That would be sad. If it did, then we wouldn't have anything else to talk about. <laughs>